What's going on guys? Welcome to Garage 23. And today we are not in the garage. We're not even in the US. We're in Yokohama, Japan at one of our bucket list items, Nissan Global Headquarters. So here we are inside and it looks like they got some pretty cool cars on display, so let's go check them out. First up is this awesome Nissan Skyline 400R. This is the equivalent to us of the Q50 Red Sport in the US. Take special note of this car because you may or may not be seeing it a little later. This one in particular looks like it's got a pretty special paint. It looks like it might be the Midnight Purple 3 color that they just put on the GTR T-Spec. It looks really nice, got like a green to purple shift. I'm usually not a fan of the brown colored interiors, but this one looks really nice with the caramel leather two-tone. It's really nice. Next awesome car we have is the new Fair Lady Z and the awesome Ikazuchi Yellow, which means lightning strike. Ika? Pretty awesome color combo. As you guys probably already know, they got the two-tone uh, proto-spec with the katana detail on the side. And then the awesome 300ZX Z32 tribute taillights on the back. A lot of guys are probably gonna want this badge in the US. Fair Lady Z. Fair Lady Z. One detail I'm hoping to see on the Nismo is the GTR brakes as the standard models, the Sport, still come with the Akebono brakes. And as we all know, the main thing we noticed when they released the Protospec was the GTR brakes on it, which we all thought was going to be a standard option on it, but they defaulted to the Akebonos. So let's hope and see if the Nismo comes with the upgraded brakes. <laughs> All right, so here we have the new interior of the Fair Lady Z. And I gotta say, Nissan's really stepped it up. Ever since the about uh, mid 2010s, uh, about the same generation as our Nissan Patrol Armada, they really stepped up their interior game and they have a much better fit and finish, much better materials. And it's really evident in this car. Everything is just, everything's just got a much more premium feel to it as opposed to older generations of Nissans that were a lot more um, economically manufactured, <laughs> I could say. This one in particular even has uh, LCD gauge cluster, which is really cool. And a nice big infotainment system, along with nice leather stitching all on the inside. All in all, not a bad way to spend, what do you probably go for now, about 50,000, 60,000? I think they were getting marked up all the way to 80,000 or more, but the biggest plus is the manual shifter, which a lot of cars don't come with nowadays. It's a little interesting sitting on this side and shifting with your left, but that's something we might have to get used to. Right, and here we have an awesome display of the new Fair Lady Z's engine, complete with manual transmission, which if you guys do or do not know, we have videos on how to rebuild on our channel. So go check those out if you haven't seen them. Um, this one in particular is the uh, JK40, a little bit, a little bit different than the CD09 that we take apart, but internally they're the same. The main difference is this sensor at the top here. This is for the uh, neutral rev match feature, but other than that, they're pretty much the same. Then we have nice clear display of the engine. This is a three-liter twin-turbo liquid um, water-to-air intercoolers. Really awesome design. All right, now we have the flagship, the beast, the Nissan GTR. 
This one in particular is the T-Spec, the very last edition that they released in special colors. The other one was, um, they just called it Midnight Purple. I think everybody's been calling it Midnight Purple 4 since it's the newest edition since the R34. This one is the Millennium Jade edition. So with the bronze wheels, nice touch, and the carbon ceramic brakes, which probably cost more than my car, to be honest. More than all my cars, <laughs> if I'm honest, I'm not sure. So a nice titanium burnt tip exhaust, gold T-spec badge. Now, like I was saying earlier, Nissan's really stepped it up interior-wise, and the T-spec is like the prime example of that. Because they have just, I mean, supercar level interior now. Nobody can complain that it's a cheap interior since like, that was one of the main issues with the first GTRs, the, the first uh, like 09s, is everybody complained that for the price, the, the interior just wasn't up to par. And now with these cars going for upwards of $100,000, the interior really matches that price tag now. All right, stepping into the T-Spec interior. I, <laughs> I have no words for this. This is way too nice. Like the floor mats are even soft. The oh, dude, like speechless. <laughs> this is amazing. You got the carbon fiber trim, the leather, green leather with the gray suede. It's amazing. Paddle shifters, of course, with the dual clutch transmission. Like I said, the light years ahead of Nissan's previous attempts at interior design. Just amazing. And the fact that they let me sit in it, I. <laughs> I, I'm beyond words right now. So it, it even comes with the built-in ETC card reader. That's amazing too. That's for the uh, toll roads here in Japan. It just automatically charges your card for any tolls. Um, in other cars, you got to add it and it's just like this big black ugly box just hanging on your interior somewhere. And it's nice that they even thought of integrating it into the interior over here. All right, let's get out before we <laughs> damage something expensive. I know at the front, this is probably the most controversial piece of the, the T-Spec GTRs is that they revised the front end. And I gotta say, in person, it does look a lot better. But ever since I released the photos, uh, we're all a little hesitant because it looks like they took a step back, right? Because uh, it looks more similar to the 09 generation in that they don't have any, like these DRLs kind of look like an afterthought, um, similar to the first generation. And we all really liked that uh, black trim piece that they added on the previous generation that really made it look like the, the prototype version that they released a long time ago. But now with this one, they went back to the 09 styling and I, I don't know, I'm not really a fan. Uh, I did like the previous one better. Uh, I do like that this one kind of has a nod to the R34 and this grill design. Cause you guys can see a little bit of similarity between the R34 GTR grill and this one. But in person now I'm noticing it has a much more pronounced scoop design, especially in the profile. So. I don't know, what do you guys think? Tell me in the comments if you guys prefer this generation or the previous one. All right, and here we have a nice display of the Nissan GTR's drivetrain, which as we all know is the VR38 V6 twin turbo intercooled V6 with the rear transaxle, dual clutch transmission. Just amazing setup. Carbon fiber drive shaft, looks like maybe aluminum front drive shaft. Of course, Brembo four piston calipers in the rear, six piston calipers in the front. So the interesting thing here is, as always, Nissan always tries to, you know, cut costs where they can. And the rear knuckles, as I'm looking at them, they look really, really similar to the 350Z or 370Z. The only difference is the caliper mounting brackets, which obviously are accommodated for the bigger Brembo calipers. But the other arms look identical, even the subframe Aside from the front portion, which mounts the transaxle, looks really, really similar to the 350Z, 370Z subframe. The front also pretty much identical to, you know, 370Z suspension, got the same upper arms. Really nice cutaway of the engine here. But a lot of you guys don't have any chrome cylinder linings. <laughs> Another little display they have right now is these awesome little nuggets, which is a 
Nissan or Datsun Sunny. A, I'm not even sure what this one is. <laughs> Nissan Cherry Deluxe. I haven't even heard of that one. And of course the Nissan March. March three door. These are all in amazing condition. Absolute beautiful little nuggets. Have little models of other cars. This is the Nissan Figaro, I believe. Oh, and then this beauty. We got an S13 two tone hatch in the seafoam green. Not hatch, coupe, my bad. <laughs> Thank you, John. This one's, this is all you, dude. It's interesting. It's got the hubcap wheels. I would think they, they would put alloys on a model like this, but. Looks like it's got the four lug hubcaps. And here we have a really cool display of little like Hot Wheels basically of the entire generations of Nissan cars all the way from 1933 till present and future. This is pretty much back when they were just Datsun and Prince Motor Co. Got some of their Le Mans racing attempts here. We've got the Fair Lady Z, the rally car, Monte Carlo rally. They even have my dream car here. And no, it's not a Skyline or a GTR, in fact. It is this beast right here, the Nissan R390. I would say that I would hope to own one one day, but these aren't available to the public and there was only two ever made for homologation reasons and they're both in private ownership of one of a Nissan executive and the other one in the Nissan Heritage Collection. So I don't think they're ever gonna sell those. And then going on to future, they have the Nismo, what was supposed to be the 510, but it's the IDX concept. Uh, doesn't look like they ever moved forward with that. And we have the R35 GTR Super GT car, another awesome build. And they have the 350Z Super GT car, which is what we based our car off of, or at least tried to. Got the Calsonic version too. Awesome little display. All right, so another thing they have here at the Nissan Global Headquarters Gallery is somewhere to blow way too much money. So let's go see what they have for sale. <laughs> Bunch of awesome merchandise, GTR hats, Fair Lady Z shirts, keychains, teddy bears. And they got some Donald Duck looking plushies too. I'm not sure what that's about. <laughs> Somebody tell me in the comments, because that one's unfamiliar to me. Let's see what else they got. Oh, they got little models. The new Fair Lady Z. Oh, this one's interesting. This is the uh, customized version that they released at, I believe, Tokyo Auto Salon. This one has the modified front bumper, which everybody criticized in the release of the original Fair Lady Z, that the front grille was just too, uh, just too square, too plain. And so in the customized version, they addressed that by having like a little uh, portion of the bumper that just comes across and splits it up, kind of like the front bumper on the Fair Lady Zs, the original ones, the S30s. So that's a nice detail. Oh my God, this is, this is too cool. A VR38 model engine, 71,500 yen though. I don't know if, I don't know if I'd want to spend that much on that. Bunch of new Nissan notes and stuff. Uh, that's, that's the thing that, um, I know, I know a lot of us car enthusiasts aren't too happy about. Nissan has really been focusing on their like EVs and like, you know, grocery getters, little, little nuggets like the March and No and Versa and stuff like that. Um, but I mean, that's what they got to do to pay the bills and have the funds to make cool cars like the Fair Lady and the GTR, so. Here we have some Nismo accessories, which I already have a little bit of, but never hurts to have some more. Oh, whole race suits. Oh no, these aren't race suits. These are, are they? Maybe just mechanic overalls. Sumasen, saifu mo kaitai desu kedo. Kore kudasai. Hi. 
All right, here we have the other half of the gallery, which like I said, Nissan's focusing more on their economy cars. And the coolest of which here is the Nismo Leaf, which um, I think it's an EV, it's a zero emission. Uh, this is kind of a controversial car because you know, they have the Fair Lady Nismo, they have the GTR Nismo, and kind of like with the Nissan Juke Nismo, they have the Leaf Nismo, and it's like, well, why, why Nissan? <laughs> why? But I will say, we need those seats. <laughs> those would look real nice in one of our cars. The other car they're focusing heavily on right now is the Nissan Aria, which I think is probably the most technologically advanced car that Nissan's made so far. I wouldn't really know any other details on that because I haven't really been paying attention to it, but there's a really cool interactive display that our, our kids were having fun with here. So that's cool. But yeah, I think that's it for Nissan headquarters gallery. So I think we're gonna grab something to eat in an equally high quality establishment. <laughs>